Now let's talk about three specific companies just for you to mull over, I suppose, as we head toward reporting season. And in this inflationary environment, we've heard from SRG Global just recently, it expects FY22 earnings to be at the top end of previous guidance between 54 and $57 million. To start with a view on that, we're very pleased to welcome Philip Pepe from Sean Partners back to the program. Welcome, Philip. Look, I didn't want to editorialize. I shouldn't have, but I, I mean, at first glance, that update coming through from SRG Global was pretty strong. It was indeed. I mean, forecasting 21% growth in EBITDA this year and then another 25% growth for next year, so with for FY23. So we think they'll be in the minority of companies to not only to give guidance uh, for the current financial year, but very strong guidance. And they've been able to do that because their work in hands grown from uh, about a billion dollars a year ago to 1.3, 1.4 billion dollars today. So they continue to win, you know, 90 to 100 million dollars worth of contracts at a time to underpin what we think is a really solid outlook for the company for the next two to three years. And so part of your thesis would be that we continue to see this, this spend coming through in construction and infrastructure in particular, and that it will continue to win at a good margin. I mean, what are the margins like? For the business overall does about a 8% um, EBITDA margin on average. The segments vary from about um, as high as 20% uh, to the highest single digits. Um, and they're sort of factoring in, uh, they're tendering on work in sort of the middle of the range at around the 10 to 12% mark. There's about 250 billion per annum spent um, on construction each year, about 45, 50 billion on maintenance. Uh, so that's pretty strong growth underpinning underpinning the sector and, we, and with labour shortages the way they are, um, margins are holding up because people generally have a, a, full, a full book and they're not competing aggressively on price, they're competing on quality and winning more and more contracts off the same client base as their clients grow. That, that's one thing we like about um, SRG, it's, it's growing with its clients. Got it. Well, the share price looks like it's done quite well over the past year as well. Um, I mentioned off the top we're in this inflationary environment. Everybody's obsessed with whether it has peaked, whether it has not. But I think everybody agrees that, uh, you know, it, prices rarely go down. When we talk about inflation, we talk about the rate of growth in prices. Uh, prices rarely, you know, come back in a really significant way. So in an inflationary environment, uh, insurers are often looked upon favorably. Is that where your mind goes to? No, absolutely. So one of the companies we like is uh, Noble Oak uh, Life Limited. It is a life insurance company that listed on the ASX about a year ago to the day. And it's one of the few IPOs in the past 12 months is trading above the issue price. So insurers tend to benefit because as, um, as, as asset values rise, the, the dollar value of insurance taken out rises. So premiums naturally grow. And it's also one of the few sectors to benefit from rising interest rates because a lot of the policyholders' funds are invested in fixed rates securities. When interest rates were falling, their returns on, on, on investment were quite low. But now with interest rates rising, they'll benefit directly uh, from higher yields on, on, their, um, on their fixed interest securities. So a double positive for inflation benefiting their business and also rising interest rates benefiting their earnings uh, directly. Okay, and so Noble Oak, you're happy to buy in, or is this a hold? Is this a buy at these levels? No, it's definitely a buy. So it operates in the $11 billion Australian individual life insurance market. It's grown its uh, in-force premiums by about 60% per annum over the last five years versus a market that's grown at about 2.5%. So they've grown their market share uh, significantly, but they still remain at about 2 2.5% market share. And the industry went through a rough time with the Hain Inquiry and with some losses in some of the, their books of business, but they've remained profitable throughout the whole time. And they've actually, um, their, their net promoter scores have continued to remain high because of the service they provide their clients. So in an industry that has restructured, it's grown market share and maintained profitability. And we just think it's underappreciated uh, by the broader market. It has only been listed for 12 months, so it's still one of the newbies to the Aussie market, but they've delivered for, um, you know, historically for, for five years now. So we continue to like this one and we think there's a reasonable result coming up um, in August from yeah. the company. Interesting. We'll be watching out for that one. I'll put a call into the company because we don't we don't speak about it very much here on the channel. So thanks for that, Philip. Mm -hmm. And I do have a bit of visibility. I know that the last on your list is Elders. It's been doing so well. 
uh, arguably a very well-run company. Uh, does anything change when we start to hear headlines about foot and mouth and all the, all the things we, we don't want to hear after surviving a pandemic? Yeah, it's interesting. There seems to be a, a new disease every year. So the, the latest thing is foot and mouth disease. Yes, if it does enter this country, it will be, um, it could be quite devastating. The reality is we've had foot and mouth disease in Asia, in the Middle East, US, UK. It's never entered Australia and we're taking measures to stop that. So at the moment, there is a bit of concern about what might happen. Uh, you know, the cattle or livestock is about 35 billion of an 80 billion per annum um, farm farming industry revenue. Um, I think we're going to move pretty quickly to, to stamp out all the risks of it coming in. So I do think it's a bit of a storm in the teacup, but it's it certainly um, uh, generated a lot of discussions this week about what might happen. But I think the reality is Australia um, historically has kept it out um, quite, quite comfortably. And I think it's more of a storm in the teacup and all, all, all confidence will be restored in the space once um, in, in the coming weeks. Okay, and so is this a, this is a buy now, is this a long-term hold, or is this one that you've got to be really on top of because of the cyclical nature of, well, I know that it's, it's got many parts to the business, et cetera, but you still do want to stay on top of this one? Absolutely. Look, if, if you had bought this one when the current management took over at $1.50 a share and held it, you'd be very happy today at circa $11, $12. It is um, a good diversifier. Um, you know, it's weather related, not interest rate or inflation or um, uh, economic uh, uh, economics related. So it is a good long term hold uh, from that sort of um, perspective. But in, in weeks like this, where there's a bit of uncertainty regarding weather and foot and mouth disease, and the stock gets sold off, you know, the, the company's delivered for seven or more years. It's delivering return on capital in excess of 20 percent. It's grown its EBIT uh, the last two years by over 30 percent per annum. Uh, it is definitely uh, a long term uh, own, in our opinion, and built worth topping up um, weeks like this where there's a bit of uncertainty and the stock falls about 5 percent. So happily top up uh, on this one and put them in the bottom drawer and you'll be you'll be happy in five years time.